Joining me now to talk through some of these issues is Otto Frika, budget spokesman for Merkel's junior coalition partners, the Free Democratic Party. Mr. Frika, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. We appreciate it. I, I want to start by asking you about the Franco-German agreement on bondholders taking losses, because Germany has had to accept a watering down of its call for automatic bond cuts. Can coalition lawmakers like yourself live with that compromise? Well, if we look into the details, and that is what we're doing during that week, we just had a meeting uh, last night with our finance minister with the budget committee. Uh, it could be the right way. We have to look into the details, as always. Um, if you say the word automatic, uh, everybody has a different angle towards that word. For us in Germany, it's important to see that if we help, which, which, which we have to do within Europe, because we are the ones who really... Uh, had great luck that we have the euro, then we have to do this under, under the special circumstances that are needed to bring back countries uh, on track, like Greece, like Ireland, but, and but uh, if that'll Fieke, work, you, then it's okay. You seem to have conceded a great deal, haven't you? Well, um, it's the question, <laughs> how much is needed? Right now, we're looking at, um, is Ireland willing to reform? And if we look at the package, they're willing to reform. But yet, nobody knows uh, where the future years are going to. So um, if things don't work well, which uh, is a part of mankind, then we have to find a way. And I think that uh, the collective action clauses that are going to come in uh, mm. at the uh, beginning, uh, middle of 2013, could be the right way. I suppose the worrying thing right now is that this compromise that Germany has made, the bailout for Ireland, it doesn't seem to have reassured the markets very much. Bond yields are continuing to climb. Um, there, there are two angles on that. Yes, on the one hand side, I think the, the, the bond market goes uh, to the numbers that probably have already been in the background that have vanished within the last years. but. We should always look at the uh, spread uh, of the bonds before we had the euros and the question where the spread is now. That is the one thing. Second thing is, um, of course, it takes a little time until everybody looks, what, what has Ireland promised to do? What, what tax cuts will they do? What will they do on the VAT? What will mm. they do on the minimum wages and so on? And it takes a little time, yet I think, um, and here comes the difference between the politician on my side and the market on the other side. Um, the question is who's the cooler one here and I think it should be politics this time. If the markets try to react more, let's say, but nervous, Mr. Speaker, um, the, they the, should look at the markets, what they lose. The markets seem to be forcing the hand of politicians like yourself. We've already had a bailout for Ireland. Now the markets seem to have Portugal and Spain in their sights. I mean, this is what we expected. It's, it's the market going to say, okay, we're going to test the next thing and the next thing. And that is why we're not only um, trying to do uh, the right things for Ireland, but that is why we're trying to find a new uh, financial stability system for the future. Telling everybody what the numbers will be in the future. And on the, on the other side, tell all the European countries what probably uh, their, their rates will be in future years uh, to get money. I think it's, we're slowly getting to a point where everybody finds out, okay, we can test, we can test, but at the end we don't win. Well, it's not just testing, is it? If you look at what's happening in the bond markets right now, according to the bond markets, there will be other Eurozone nations that will need help. Um, I'm not yet sure about that. I mean, we, we have to look at two things. The one, in what, what was happening on the day-to-day -day market, and, and the other thing is, um, if uh, countries like Spain and Portugal go on the market with new bonds. But um, right now, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't like to say, okay, you mm. see, you, you put a piece of paper on and numbers are going up and, and, and everything, and, and then everything is going to work back that way. No, it's, it's a testing, and it's a question who, who is willing to, to take bonds and who is willing to sell, to sell bonds for what price. And that's where we have to look, and mm. politics have to react and do something. Mr. Fika, are you at all concerned about the size of the EU's bailout pot? No, not really right now. If I look, if I look at the numbers, um, what Ireland is getting right now, it's, it's this 85 billion euros. And where these 85 billion euros come? From Ireland itself, from these uh, three, three columns we've built. Um, no, I, I don't think that that is a size question right now. Um, I know that uh, there again the market tried um, to react and, and was nervous because Every time a politician mm. uh, of influence has an idea, the market says, okay, it's not an idea, it's a plot behind it, and that's the way it's going to be, and we're going to follow but it. So we have to be very cautious. Mr. Fika, Spain seems to be the big worry right now as the Eurozone's fourth largest economy, and almost, it's almost twice the size of Portugal, Ireland, and Greece. Is the EU's fund big enough to save Spain? <laughs> 
if I, if I were the one to, to answer that question absolutely precisely, I'd do the wrong job. I'd not, I wouldn't be a politician. But if I look what Ireland did and how we did build up the Ireland um, uh, package, then you can see you can compare the numbers before you do a package after you've made mm -hmm. the package. And then again, which we don't have to forget, there is no uh, Spain rescue thing going on. Mr. Fika, Merkel, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, narrowly secured support for that 750 billion euro rescue package in May. And that was met with a great deal of criticism, discontent. There were murmurings, people saying, right, we've done it now, we're never going to do it again. Do you think that Parliament would support expanding the fund, in theory? Um, this would be a politician, if I'd answer right now, to answer a question that is not asked yet. Um, what we're doing right now, and what is the big discussion within Germany, and especially if you talk with average Joe on the street, is to tell him where are the advantages of the euro, why are we helping, and most important, what will be the future uh, uh, fund? How will it look? What will it look like in future? And how do we get, let's say, um, the ones who are on the market to pay and not the taxpayer to pay in future. This is the big German issue. Yes, so the, Euro the European fund help, can be expanded for troubled countries if needs be, is what you're saying? No, it, 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 I mean, you're talking about politics. Here it comes, what is the, the ability that politics do have? What can they do? But it's not, there is no plan, there is no talk about it. Yesterday, during that two-hour meeting, there was no talk about expanding with the finance minister. And this is the point we're right at. This, t this, this week is to help to put on the one hand side Ireland um, back on, 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 on track and the other one to find future measures and not to talk about space. Mr. Otto Frieker, budget spokesman for the Free Democratic Party. Really interesting to talk to you. Thanks very much for joining us.